The Digital PSAT and SAT, brought to you by Test Prep Gurus. The PSAT and SAT are changing from paper-based exams to digital adaptive exams. In this video, we'll unpack what that means for students. The digital PSAT will be released in America in the fall of 2023. The digital SAT will be released in March of 2024. Digital PSAT and SAT structure. The digital PSAT is two hours and 14 minutes. There are two section scores, verbal and math. Just like in the past, each section of the PSAT is scored on a scale of 160 to 760. The total possible score on the PSAT is 320 to 1520. The digital SAT is also two hours and 14 minutes. It also has two section scores, verbal and math. Each section of the digital SAT is scored on the familiar scale of 200 to 800. The total possible score is 400 to 1600. Each of the verbal and math sections is divided into two equal length modules. Students will first see verbal module one. They will then advance to verbal module two. This is followed by a 10 minute break. Students will then see math module one, followed by Math Module 2. The verbal modules each contain 25 questions in 32 minutes. The math modules each contain 20 questions in 35 minutes. All modules contain an additional two pre-test questions that will not count towards your score. The digital PSAT and SAT are adaptive. Here's how it works in practice. In Module 1 of the Verbal and Math sections, students will see a variety of easy, medium, and hard questions. Depending on the student's performance in Module 1, they will advance to either an easier Module 2 or a harder Module 2. The scores of students who progress to the easier Module 2 will be capped. Only students who reach the harder Module 2 will be able to achieve the highest possible scores. The exact number of questions you will need to answer correctly on the first module to advance to the harder second module is not known, as it may vary depending on the test version and the scoring algorithm. However, early research suggests that you may need to answer at least 75% of the questions correctly on the first module to get a chance to see the harder questions on the second module. The exact score ranges for the easier and harder modules will also depend on the test version and the scoring algorithm of that particular exam. But our research suggests that students in the easier module will see scores between 200 and 650, while students in the harder module will see scores between 450 and 800. This is an important insight for two reasons. One, Students who advance to the easier second module can still achieve competitive scores. Two, for students who are aiming for the highest possible scores, their performance during the first module will be critical to their overall success. We would advise students to warm up before the official exam with some sample problems to make sure they are ready to perform when the official test begins. It's important to note that you will not know whether you've qualified for the easier or harder second module. The harder module will contain more difficult problems but some easy ones as well. In light of this, our advice is to strive to reach the harder second module to maximize your score, but don't put undue stress on yourself to do so. A little bit of pressure to do well can help your performance, but freaking out over whether you qualified for the easier or harder second module can distract you from the task at hand. Do your best, answer as many questions correctly as possible in both modules, and see where the score lands. Verbal questions will test a variety of content areas. Command of evidence, knowledge of high utility words and phrases, ability to revise and edit writing, command of standard English, writing craft and structure, understanding information and ideas, standard English conventions, and expression of ideas. All of the verbal questions are multiple choice. Most questions have one short passage and a relative few have a pair of short passages. Here's a sample verbal problem. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to attempt the question on your own. The correct answer is D. Here's an explanation of why D is the best answer.
The math questions on the digital PSAT and SAT will primarily test the following four content domains, algebra, advanced math, problem solving and data analysis, geometry, and trigonometry. Difficulty on both the math and verbal sections of the digital exams will range from sixth grade to college level material. 75% of questions on the math sections are multiple choice and 25% are student response questions. We are pleased to announce that the digital PSAT and SAT will both allow calculators on every single math question. You will have the option to use an approved personal calculator or take advantage of the built-in graphing calculator embedded in the software of the digital exam. Here's a sample math question. Feel free to pause the video if you'd like to attempt the question on your own. The correct answer is D. Here's an explanation of why D is the best answer. Many students find it useful to prepare for the PSAT and SAT as they would for any other test in school. The digital exams will offer the same range of accessibility options, including extended test time and breaks, text-to-speech, and or speech-to-text. A paper-based version of the digital SAT or PSAT will be available for students who qualify for this accommodation. The process for requesting accommodations will remain the same. Families will need to contact their high school counselors to apply. Devices. Students will need to bring their own laptop or iPad to take the exam. They will also be allowed to use a school-owned desktop or laptop or a school-managed Chromebook. If you bring your own device, make sure to download the College Board software several days before the official PSAT or SAT. Don't forget to charge your device the night before and to bring a power cord with you to the school or testing center the day of the exam. Your device will need to remain powered on for three full hours, and depending on your test location, it may not be possible to charge your device the day of the exam. Like and subscribe for more free information about standardized testing, college admissions, and building life skills for college and beyond. Visit Test Prep Gurus if you'd like to sign up for a free mock ACT or SAT exam. It's often helpful to remember that standardized tests are not an indication of your intelligence, intellectual capacity, or future potential. They test verbal and mathematical fundamentals and can be prepared for like any other exam. In college admissions, they are one piece of the puzzle that help admissions officers make fair and transparent decisions by providing a common yardstick for all students. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.